think the best way to um, sketch quadratics is to Ill illustrate with an example. So let's just look at x squared minus 5x plus 6 as an example of a question we're going to sketch. Now the first thing we want to do is find out where does it cross the x-axis. We find that by letting y equal 0, because if we draw our axes in, there's our x-axis and there's our y-axis. Now all the way along the x-axis, the y-value doesn't have a value, it's equal to 0. If you go above the x-axis, y starts to get positive and bigger, and if you go below the x-axis, it starts to get negative. So along the x-axis, that is where y equals naught. So first of all, we let y equal 0. So z y equals 0, and we get x squared minus 5x plus 6. So we have to solve this equation to find out where it crosses the x-axis. And there are several ways to do it. One of them is to factorise, and we're going to look at that method of doing so. So when we're factorising, this quadratic is a trinomial. There's no common factor. Always look for common factors first and take them out and divide by them if you're trying to solve using factorisation. But there is no common factor here. So we can't take that out. So we need two things at times to give you x squared. So we put an x here and an x here. If you had 2x squared, then you might put a 2x there and an x there. If you had 3x squared, you could put 3x and x. If you have 4x squared, well, you've got more choices. 4x and x, 2x and 2x. Right? The first two things must multiply to give you how many lots of x squared you've got. Now, the two things in the end must multiply to give us 6 so let's pick two things that multiply to give us 6 at random. I'm not going to um, think ahead. I'm just going to choose two numbers at random multiply to give me 6, 1 and 6. Now, is there a way I can combine these to give me minus 5? Well, I could do if I did minus 6 and plus 1. But 1 times minus 6 gives me minus 6 and would not give me the plus 6 when I multiply out. So that can't work. So the signs there can't be right. Um, is there any other way I can get minus 5? Well, there isn't. So therefore, these can't be the right numbers. Let's try some different numbers. Let's try 2 and 3. They both times together to give me 6. How can I combine them to give me minus 5? Well, minus 2 and minus 3. Add those together, I get minus 5. Now, you might ask yourself, why am I adding these up to get minus 5? Well, the reason why is when I multiply out these brackets, I used the FOIL idea. I times out the first two things, which gives me x times x, which gives me x squared. I multiply out the outer two things, gives me x times minus 3, gives me minus 3x. And I times the inner two things to get minus 2x, times the last two things to get plus 6. Minus 2 times minus 3 gives me plus 6. And we can see that these two numbers add to give you the minus 5x. Right, we've now factorised this. So we've got this number here, times by this number here. Right, you can imagine x minus 2 is a number, x minus 3 is a number, and you've times those two numbers together to get 0, so one of them must be 0. So either x minus 2 must equal 0, or x minus 3 must equal 0. So this number here must equal 0, or this number here must equal 0. These two times things time together must equal 0. One of them must be 0. So from that, we can now find our value of x. So from this one, solve it. x must equal 2. When x minus 3 equals 0, we know that x equals 3. So we've got two possible points where it can cross the x-axis. 1 at 2 and 1 at 3. So we know our graph is going to cross the x-axis. Now what shape is it? Is it going to be a u-shape like this? Or is it going to cross like an n shape? Quadratics can be either u or n shaped. Well, we look at the x squared. Is this positive or is it negative? Well, this is positive. So therefore, as you square, the values are going to get big and positive. And again, even if you go down the negative end, it's going to get big and positive. So we're going to have this u-shaped graph. Okay. The accuracy of the graph doesn't matter. The as long as the sketch has some representation of what it looks like. And the key thing is that it's U-shaped in this case, or if it's the other way, you have a sort of N-shape. Now the other 
the first thing we have to do is find where it crosses the x-axis. The next thing we need to do is find out where it crosses the y-axis. And we also want to find the minimum point. So part two, let's find out where it crosses. Does it cross the y-axis? Well, for this, x must equal naught. And we've just factorised the expression. So we know if x equals naught, we have, well, there's lots of ways you can do it. Actually, you can factorise it, or you can put it in the factors form, or you can put it in the normal form. Actually, normal form is easier, because if you notice, naught squared minus 5 times naught plus 6, these two terms are always going to be 0, because the x value is 0, and you're timesing. So actually, it always crosses the y-axis at the value we add or take away at the end. So this value here will be 6. Now we just want to find out this value. Where's the minimum point? Well, the minimum point occurs... Okay, All quadratics... are symmetrical. So they're symmetrical, then the minimum point must lie on the line of symmetry. And if we know it crosses at 2 and 3, this is going to be, this line of symmetry is going to be the line x equals 2.5, halfway between 2 and 3. So therefore, the minimum, or if it is a U-shape, the maximum point, must lie on the line of symmetry. And we know that the line of symmetry is exactly halfway between the two values where the graph crosses the x-axis. And we can similarly, we can find the y value now, we know the x value where this happens, by putting it into our equation. So we've got y equals x squared minus 5x plus 6. So we can put x equals 2.5 into that. And we get y equals 2.5 squared, which is going to be 6.25. Minus 5 times 2.5, or 5 times 2 is 10, so it's going to be minus 12.5, plus 6. So that will give us y equals minus 0.25 when you add all these terms up. So the value here is minus 0.25, and the val x value here is 2.5. So the actual coordinates, if you wanted to work out the coordinates, would be 2.5, comma, minus 0.25. And now we've got all our key points of the graph. We've found where it crosses the x-axis, where it crosses the y-axis, and where the minimum point occurred. So we can now label our graph y equals x squared minus 5x plus 6.